when the bullying started, it hit me hard. I mean, it became very hard for me to walk out the door. It became very hard for me to try and make friends because whenever I did, it was a rumour would go round and and it would stop it and they would just laugh and I wouldn't have any friends. So my school life in, in, in Margate was okay, okay until I got into the secondary school, which is when I first found out I was gay um, in, in year seven. Um, and I think finding out that I was gay changed me in somewhat, which people picked up on, which is when the bullying started. The worst experience I've ever had um, was uh, a day I was walking home. Actually, it was a really nice day. I'd uh, By then I'd got some friends, but what happened was I was walking home and a, a, a gang of kids that go to my school uh, literally just walked up in front of me and stopped me. And um, they'd all, I know it was silly and everything like that, but they'd all unfolded metal paper clips and put them between their fingers and came up and put it to my, to my neck. That was scary. I mean, there was nobody else around. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I'd only just found a good friend, so I didn't have anyone to have my back. I mean, I was walking home alone as well. And yeah, it was, it was quite, it was very, very horrible. I mean, I know a paper clip wouldn't do much damage, but it wasn't the paper clip. It was, it was the threat itself. It was, I mean, it was the shock that someone would go to that level because of who I am. Why, why would they do something like that? By the time that happened, I'd come out that I was gay. I think that must be the biggest reason why they did it. The reason why I started the L Project is because I had a friend at work who confided in me and basically told me about how he's being bullied at school um, for being gay. He wasn't out at school um, and he was suffering some quite bad bullying, um, like being beaten up and things like that on a regular basis. Um, I was worried about him so I went home one night and um, just wrote the, started to write the song and as I kind of got through the first verse and the chorus, I was thinking, hmm, I've not written a bad one. I was thinking that, you know, I could maybe do something with it. So um, I then wrote the second verse for, um, like, to appeal to, like, a wider audience. By the time I'd got to the end, I was thinking, actually, yeah, I could do something with it as so far as it being a charity song. So obviously, um, being in the band, we've been on the circuit, you know, for quite a few years, know a lot of people in the music industry, so I thought I could contact them all and had all this all in one night um i know i'll contact my friends and see if they're interested in doing it as a charity song and uh they all kind of said yes so then got some sponsors on board sophia who um was one of the vocalists who i contacted from geek girl she then came on board and said oh i can i can build a website i can do this so we started working together and that's kind of how it came around really completely by um fluke really just all in one night from writing the song and thinking yeah, I think it could help people, so yeah, that's how it started. There was no big plan, right, you know, like it was just literally kind of, this would be a good idea. I got involved in the L Project as one of the artists that got asked to sing on the track. Um, so I was in the band with George Grey Matter anyway, um, and so I worked with her all the time and she said to me, oh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of doing this and like, the thing with George, I think most people would laugh at like, an idea that seems that big, but um, I know that she's the type of person that will do something and carry it out so she asked if I'd wanted to sing on the track and I like I, I said I'd love to um, and yeah it went from there really. And when George initially asked me to be involved in the L project I didn't hesitate and then the more I thought about it I um, I don't know I, I think I panicked a bit even now like I've, I've got a full-time job I'm in education um, and I, I initially worry like what what would my students think if they knew that I was involved in this or um, I'm, I'm not really I hadn't been very out and proud um, and that for me made it more important for me to be involved in this project because in actual fact I should be proud of who I am um, I've got a really loving and loyal family behind me who are you know, ridiculously proud of everything that I've achieved and so I think it takes people to stand up and say you know it doesn't matter um, and to be proud of who they are and that for me is what this project was about and how important it's been for me to feel better about who I am I think. Within the band Grey Matter we've all met, always been very much about the music so obviously like, 
all of us in the band that are gay, but it isn't necessarily something that we want the music to be about. Um, but it also has given us a really good platform for going out and um, doing gigs. And we've, we've, we've played in places that you know we might not have had the opportunity to do so otherwise. If you've got an amazing cause, um, but you've got people to get that out there, and then you know you can spread it through their fan bases, and um, you know it, it just spreads this message, and there's that ripple effect. Um, and for me, one of the best things has been working with all the artists because there there's some there's so much talent on this song, but also everyone's everyone's so down to earth, and um, I, I've had a lot of fun like throughout the experience, and I feel like everyone um, thinks that they're doing their little bit to help um, you know, put this issue on the map. We chose um, two charities, uh, one being Stonewall because of the It Gets Better Today campaign, which you've probably seen all the little posters and everything and all the prides, um, and because they're, they're widely known um, worldwide, Stonewall, um, and we wanted something that people could think, oh yes, I've, I know that charity, but then also Diversity Role Models um, because they go straight into schools and chat to the kids of all ages um, about LGBTQ issues so they don't grow up obviously looking at gay people and thinking oh you look a little bit different or you seem different they just have an awareness and just see everyone as equal what i want to do first is i want you to tell me some of the things you learned about during lgbt week we learned about the rainbow flag good we learned about the rainbow flag um we learned we learned about um that being different is okay Diversity Role Models is a charity that was set up in September last year, although the groundwork was being done prior to that. Um, we, we work with mostly secondary schools, but with some primary schools as well. Usually we would work with a, an entire year group in one school, so we'd work with all of year 8 or all of year 10 and we'd go into each class and we'd do a workshop for one hour with the class, so maybe 25 to 30 students. And at the moment I facilitate all of those sessions and I take in two role models with me, usually one male, one female. And what we do is we talk a lot about stereotypes, um, gender stereotypes, uh, stereotypes of LGBT people. There's some challenges in there about homophobic language and what the word gay means um, to people who are actually gay when it's used um, in the pejorative. Um, so it's, it's fairly positive in tone, the role models are um, well-adjusted people, comfortable within their own skin, and they tell a story to the kids. They've all been through training themselves. Well, one of the nicest things that's happened is we had a um, we had quite a difficult series of workshops a couple of weeks ago, and um, with Year Seven, so they were quite noisy and uh, boisterous, and <coughs> they were finding the the topic. Some of the kids were finding the topic quite difficult, um, but all in all, again, the evaluations are very positive. As we were about to leave the school, a student came up. Um, he came up with a teacher, and the teacher said, oh, this young man's got something to say to you. And uh, he sort of scuffed his feet for a bit, and then he looked up, and he said, my dad told me to cross the street uh, when I saw people like you. He said, but I realise now that that's wrong. I'm not going to do it anymore. And it was one of those moments where, you know, after really hard sessions, where you think, gosh, is this worth it, that you think, yeah, it's worth it. Um, it was really brave of him to come and do that. Our first live performance was at the Pride Ball in Birmingham, um, and it was it was amazing, but it was also like it was fairly nerve wracking as well. Uh, we got there, and if you think like all the artists are from all over the country, and so we'd been practicing individually, um, and we thought it would just come together, <laughs> and then we did the sound check, and we all went. Right, we might need to have a little practice all together. We need a little practice. Um, so we went back to the hotel room and went, went through it and um, felt way more comfortable and then gave the live performance on the night. Pride Ball was amazing for raising awareness of the project. Um, there were lots of people there, lots of industry people, um, and you know, we had a lot of posts on the Facebook wall afterwards. Uh, we hope that it's transferred to people buying the single, um, but feedback says that that they, they were and um, it's, you know, it's all raising awareness, so really important. Things like the L Project um, are fantastic for us because the work that they've done in promoting the single um, and, and also promoting, uh, sorry, um, discussing the effects of homophobic bullying and what it, it does, um, it, it really helps draw attention to A, the cause, but also some of the, the financial benefits that we'll get from that will help us hopefully to employ another facilitator to do some work in schools so that we can increase and perhaps double the reach that we have at the moment. So the song did really well when it got released on uh, February the 11th. Um, 
within about uh, 17 hours we had gone to number one on the Amazon folk charts and the rock song charts and we were number one on the um, UK iTunes album charts and we stayed there for about eight days um, and then we also went in at number 11 on the independence charts which is quite something without um, radio airplay or anything. Please be on your feet for Georgie Kane and the Elvis. For outstanding contribution to the LGBT community 2012, given to us by the Midland Zone Readers Award, and it was uh, it was a complete shock and a real surprise because we had no idea these guys, um, Emma and Sophia, were on the way to the bar. Um, I was just chatting to my girlfriend, and then all of a sudden I heard them talk about the single. I was thinking, God, I can't believe it. we've missed another single, you know being released and then realised it was us when all of a sudden it went the L project on the big screen we were like oh my god it was for us so yeah uh, we managed to clamber a few of us together didn't we to get up onto the stage and yeah it was really lovely to win the award made, us, made me and Sophia and everyone involved feel very appreciated when I go onto the website and the Facebook page and I see how many people that this song's touch like and that sounds so cheesy but you think wow like the message is getting out there um and if this song can make it easier for one person to come out or feel more comfortable with who they are then for me that's that's a success like, it doesn't matter money raised is great it then allows us to have more impact elsewhere but it's the individual stories on the page that for me make this worthwhile without social networking Nobody would probably hear of us because we haven't had mainstream radio play or anything, have we? So, if you look, it's had over two hundred thousand hits on YouTube. Two hundred forty. Yeah. Two hundred forty thousand yeah, hits on YouTube. Including the signing YouTube. video, yeah, and that so, keeps going up. Um, you know, without that, like, it just wouldn't have the coverage um, that it needs in order to get out there. And I think if you can feel less alone when you're going through, you know, whatever it is that you're going through when you're coming out, then um, maybe it'll make it a little bit easier. Mm. And for me, I wanted to make sure that it reached the kids, and it has done. There are so many kids that have left comments, and also that have emailed kids as young as like 13, 14, uh, that are being bullied at the time, and they said, I listened to your song, and there was one boy, actually, uh, I think this is on the YouTube page, who left a comment, and he says, I'm sat in school, I'm 14 years old, and I've got my iPod on, I'm actually being bullied right now, um, but I am just keep listening to your song, and he says, and it's making me feel better, and I was like, oh. God, yeah, it's such a problem, such a problem bullying. One person, I don't know who they were, they posted and they said that they were stood on, I think, Liverpool Street or um, Station or a station in London um, and they were, they couldn't help themselves, like they were humming along and singing along to the song, they had their iPhone headphones on and another girl walked up to them and just like turned her iPod round and was playing the same song and like, that for me was amazing. Uh, I thought, wow, you know, this, this is getting out there. And we have lots more planned as well um, for it with uh, merchandise and other projects after this one. Obviously, we're focusing on this one at the moment with the music, but there will be others. The L Project has done an amazing, has done an amazing job so far with, with the video, um, spreading the message across. Um, it, I listen to it probably on a daily basis at the moment. Um, I mean, it's catchy and I do find myself singing it as I'm walking around. Um, but I think with situations like these, there isn't much you can do um, other than be that supporting friend, be be there and keep reminding people that, like the video says, it does get better. If anyone was out there and they're in a situation now where they're being bullied, um, you know, whether it's for being gay or whatever it is, uh, the most important thing is to tell someone. Um, there's professional help out there that can you know, help you deal with that, but let someone know, let them help you, and then you won't feel alone, um, because it's something can always can be done. It does get better. It does get better. Yeah.